Hey everyone, welcome back to Faces and Places in Fashion. Super excited for today's lecture. Um, quick reminder for you, lecture prep questions are due by May 10th. There are two classes left after today. So if you have not done any yet, you need to do both of the next two classes in order to get full credit on the assignment. Please make sure to use the template that's posted to Blackboard under content when you send it through to me. The final will be a take home. You'll have a week to complete it. It will be due on May 17th. Please plan accordingly and um, all you'll need to do to prepare is make sure that you have come to all the classes and taken good notes and have some great anecdotal um, takeaways from class. Student evaluations are live. Those are due by May 7th, which is uh, about three weeks, two weeks to go. So make sure that you're filling those out. And a quick flash for our schedule. Uh, today we have with us Juana Botez, who's a costume designer and stage for theater, opera, and dance. Uh, next week, Rachel Landy's joining us from Kate Spade. She's the vice president of global merchandising. And our final week will be Fashion Services Network with a panel of um, awesome guests who can talk to us about the ins and outs of the fashion industry. And I should, be, I should have the names for you guys next week of who's going to be here, so you can check that out. And with that, I would love to welcome Awana to our class. Um, Ms. Wittes is a Princess Grace recipient, NEA TCG Career Development Program recipient, and NEA TCG Round of Global Connections Program. She's nominated for the Lucille Lortel Award, the Theater Bay Area Awards, the Henry Hughes Design Awards, the Barrymore and Drammy Awards, and she walked away as a recipient, a recipient of both the Barrymore and Drammy Awards. Her designs have raised critical acclaim in New York, uh, New York's BAM, Next Wave, Bard, Summerscape, Richard B. Fisher Center, uh, Barishnikov Art Center, the David H. Uh, Koch Theater in Lincoln Center, Soho Rep, LCT3, the Public Theater, 59 East 59, La Mama, the Kitchen, PS122, Here Art Center, the Joyce Theater, um, Brick Arts Media, Big Apple Circus in Lincoln Center, and the Classic Stage Company. Ms. Potez is a graduate of Bucharest, um, Bucharest Art Academy in Romania and received an MFA in design from NYU Tisch School of the Arts. She's a major contributor of the first Romanian theater design catalog, and she taught costume design at Colgate College, Brooklyn College, and MIT. She's currently an assistant professor um, in the design department at Yale School of Drama, and she lives here in New York City. So please join me in welcoming Elena. <laughs> Hi everybody. Um, it's a it's a it's a bizarre platform. I don't see anybody. <laughs> I, well, I'm, I'm here. Yes, I can see you. Okay. Uh, I'm 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 used to Zoom, so uh, this is new. So I'm a little disoriented. Sorry about I that. Know. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you can see the students along the bottom. Um, and I usually repeat our remote guidelines, but I figured at this stage of the semester, they are all sick of hearing them. But when they come up to speak, they will turn their cameras on. So you won't be speaking Perfect. just from like speech Perfect. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Um, we do have quite a few students who are interested in costume design. So your background is um, is perfect for, for talking <laughs> about, um, about the path. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started and had and your path that you've had up until now? I mean, it's it's so interesting that we get to talk about this when our industry has been on hold since last uh, March, basically. Um, yeah. And uh, it's you know it's still a little bit tricky because um, anybody who tried a bit to come back. Um, <laughs> cast member got sick and they got canceled and you know um meanwhile um we are all missing to be together and and create uh the work um i i uh, i'm an immigrant I, I come from romania and um i started quite a while ago um i i grew up in a communist Romania and that meant uh, three hours of uh, television um, per, per day and that was all curated and um, 
you know, in order to support a, a dictatorship. So as a result, my parents will, um, since I was very little, will take me to this uh, art house type of uh, film, you know, uh, house, theater, ha film theater house. And I will watch uh, incredible movies that, you know, um, like Tarkovsky and Bergman and, you know, so many other other uh, wonderful film directors. And um, you might see, I have two cats, so they might <laughs> join us. Super friendly. <laughs> My dog is usually barking at me by the end of the session, so I feel you. <laughs> so this, this is Stalin, actually. His name is Stalin. Stalin. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Um, and uh, the other thing, what what they they will take me to the theater or to see, um, you know, uh, ballet uh, at the Opera House in Bucharest, where I grew up. Um, so I, you know, I, I was introduced to to this world, which was live performance. Uh, you know, since I was very young and. Uh, I still, I have to tell you, I don't have a TV. Uh, I don't use it. I, I mean, I watch yes, movies. Me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watch movies on my computer, but I don't, I still don't have a TV because I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't get my news anyway. So, um, um, and when I was in, I, I got into an art school since I, you know, since fifth grade. Um, and um, it it was it you know it it formed me and I became friends with uh, the daughter of um, a female um, theater director uh, that you know she she will have all those rehearsals and um, I used to do something that you should never do being in school. I will miss classes and just go watch rehearsals. <laughs> and that's how I fell in love with theater, just watching, watching rehearsals and uh, also experimenting uh, with different shapes and forms in, in my uh, art classes. And I knew that I want to do that basically with live um, live performance Very yeah cool <laughs> so how did you get the first job out of school how you, your first well, design job? well um you mean in romania or here <laughs> <laughs> um i guess starting in romania and then here both would be interesting so, so I, I i got connected with this um in, very young we were we were still in school you, the uh, at that point, I was at the university, the art university in Bucharest, um, and I got connected with this young director who also was in school, and we we did this piece that um, called Ivona, the Princess of Bur Princess of Burgundy, uh, by Gombrowicz, and um, it 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 basically it was such a success in the school and because Romania has such an amazing um, you know theater history background and people are very involved in the in uh, in the theater world and as I said it was like one of the main things that was happening during you know uh, hard moments uh, like communism and dictatorship so um and a lot of respect a lot of respect and support even if it was censorship but um yeah we got we really got um it got a lot of interest in our piece so we start traveling with like different festivals and from there somehow overnight i got i got hired by a theater that was outside of Bucharest, 10 hours away uh, by train. I used to travel during the night. And uh, again, I was missing school and just um, going and working in this theater in, in, a, in, in 
Pennsylvania, this corner of Romania, you know, in the north. So, um, yeah, that's how I started there. And here I uh, emigrated in 99 and um, basically I, I, I left a career behind me um, and I kind of decided to just leave. And um, in the beginning it was a bit hard and you know, I, I didn't speak English. I didn't know anybody. I, I had no idea of anything. And I start kind of introducing myself to different people slowly. Then I got in NYU. I had a full scholarship and a TA position. So slowly I start making connections and meeting more people. And in my first year in December, actually in the fall, I... I did a dance piece with Gus Solomon, who used to teach, uh, he, he used to dance for Merce Cunningham and then he had his company with Carmen de la Valada. All those people are, you know, um, they, you know, been making history in, in the dance world. Uh, and um, I was designing for his student and he basically saw my costumes and he said, would you, like to design for my company Amazing. Uh, and uh, work for the Joyce Theater, you know, basically in, in this, it was like something December, January that year. So that's how I started, you know, people just seeing my work and asking me to be part of their teams. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, what is, what does an entry jo level job look like in costume design? Or I'm sorry, what? What? what is an entry level job? If someone just out of school wants to do costume design, what do they do? Um, I mean, you know, a lot of people are choosing to assist most of the time. And, and that's a way, you know, um, just basically kind of learning the system, learning the business uh, through assisting the different designer that you like. You know, you just contact them and offer your your you know skills to them uh yeah. and it's a it's a great way of learning you know um i'm assuming you do the same thing in fashion right so yeah. <laughs> um and you know i i i didn't assist uh i was <laughs> i was very stubborn and i already i was very proud of what i accomplished already in in Romania and I was coming here even I didn't know anybody but um, I also knew that I will not be a very good assistant so I prefer to not do that um, yeah and you know it, it you know I, I mean people will tell you different stories but uh, being an assistant to someone is, is, is a way of um, kind of learning the business yeah 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 sense um and now when you work on projects usually is it just you and assist and an assistant or are there more people on the team well i mean <clears throat> you know i have a um i'm sorry if i start coughing i think the allergies today are a little oh, funny uh, brutal yeah yeah they're brutal um i mean i have one or two people who are mostly at the time i have somebody for a, a period of a period of time when you know they're very close to me and we're working together um it totally depends um some people because they do more uh commercial work for example broadway or they have more assistance they're just you know um my my work it's a bit different you know there it it's it hasn't been that commercial let's put it that way uh but i do work with different costume shops and if it's in the city then I have access to different costume shops and then there is you know um, a number of people who are working on the costumes there is the theater who offers their people and uh, wardrobe and production who that's another group of people so basically it kind of takes an army to work <laughs> the production, you know uh, yeah. Obviously, obviously, in the beginning, when you know um, places like La Mama, which is a historical place, you know, you, you have uh, 
Ellen Stewart who uh, founded La Mama and she was uh, one of the first black women to run a theater. Um, yeah. And she, you know, she basically discovered a, lo a lot of an amazing artist uh, that, you know, like Robert Wilson or, you know, di different, different, different names that they're out there right, right now. And, you know, they're yeah. making history in the business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but places like that, for example, where they don't really have a support system, you know, it, it, and you're in the beginning of the career and you, need, you know, try to figure it out. Don't get me wrong. There are lots of a pretty well-known diners who still go and work on a mama because there is this historical place, you know, but uh, places like that, for example, you have to navigate with an assistant and a lot of um, trying to convince people in the office that you need more help than usual. But when when <laughs> when you're young, that that works, you know. <laughs> when yeah. in the beginning yeah. of the career and you have more energy, that works. Not yeah. So much yeah. these days for me. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you went and got your MFA at NYU. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You touched on that a little bit before, um, but why did you mm -hmm. decide to do it? Uh, well, I, you know, I, I moved to this country in 1999 at the end of August and I got in school and I started school in 2001 and I, I kind of understood that right away. Um, it was something, I moved here and um, in order to really understand a culture and a language, it's good to go through school. Uh, then it, it gives you some grounds of a world. And I understood that as an immigrant that uh, I didn't, I, I wasn't, you know, for example, New York has a pretty uh, big Romanian, you know, community that I kind of don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a pretty bad Romanian, uh, but um, I also knew that I didn't want to get stuck and be part of a community and and just speak just the language and just behave like I never loved the country. It's very easy to do that. I was interested yeah. what this city was offering, and that means the variety of bodies and shapes and languages and the beauty that comes with it so um i went to school <laughs> basically yeah. that's what happened i just wanted to to feel that at least i'm i'm trying a bit to to you know and i've been here now for 21 years soon to be 22 wow. and um i will never be fully you know i'm, I'm a new yorker Am I American? Yes, I am by papers, but, you know, I will always be somewhere in between, you know, because yeah. that's the, what happens to em immigrants, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Did you find the program worthwhile? Oh, yeah. It was a, a bit of a boot camp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of don't remember those three years. Um, it was very brutal and really wonderful and hard. Uh, I found... Um, you know, some of my best friends are from that time period <clears throat> and collaborators and definitely you kind of figure out aesthetics and who would you like to work and then you kind of keep in touch and work together. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was fantastic. It was exactly what I needed. Very hard, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> great and what what's the program set up like well it changed right now um there you know the film part it'd be you know in the production design is very big so they're very you know there are a lot of a lot of their effort when i was there they they're a little bit against it and a little bit like, oh, this is just about theater, you know? <laughs> it's so it's funny because the same people are there, but they discover that, you know, um, film and TV just um, took a corner of like some very interesting work. And um, it wasn't just 
silliness anymore. You know, it's, it, you know, I mean, like, to be honest, for a, a lot of us, I'm assuming, you know, with, with this pandemic, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> you know, for Netflix and Hulu. And Seriously, Hulu. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, things would have looked know, a lot I, differently in the 90s or 80s <laughs> right 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 and you know amazon prime and uh you do look at, at, at great movies and content these days you know there's yeah. a lot of silly stuff too don't get me wrong maybe more than it should be but you do you you do you know so they went that way more than when i was there um but um you know the 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 classes it had it was like between the studios and studio classes and then the productions and um in my case i was a ta so i was working 20 hours a week no matter what wow. um and uh yeah sometimes sometimes it was it was pretty brutal i will uh have to say like I will leave the school, and I used to live in Queens. I, I will leave the school around 3, 4, 5 a.m. and had to be back 9 a.m. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was grad school for us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, inter it's interesting to watch, you know, to see that also uh, with the students right now, with my students, kind of, you know, kind of a similar schedule. Well, less now because we don't have productions, so it's a bit different. Uh, we've been online, as yeah. you all know yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so actually that's a good segue. You touched on COVID before as well, but how's this year been for you? I mean, def definitely I need to go and check up on, on my glasses and my prescriptions. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm about to discover things that I, you know, um it's been i think the work it has been just because we we haven't been busy and running around it also made us a little more um going deeper with the work and we see that on the students and some you know i mean of course there are complaints and annoyance of like what's happening and and patience and you know you know and and grief around what what's happening all over the world that that's real you know and and yeah. uh, all the political situations and the violence you know and, and the pandemic itself that it's so hard but um uh, I'm I'm very lucky. I, I I got I got I'm getting very inspired by my students and I love working with them. Yeah, so, yeah. you know it. It is what it is. I mean, of course, for the kind of work we do, we like to be in person, and we will be in the fall. But um, um, I'm very very grateful. You know, so far everybody around me, uh, it's healthy, and we keep going. You know. Yeah. That's good. Have you done any sort of creative productions in the pandemic? Like, have you done anything uh, online? Or? Yeah, I'm. I'm not crazy about the online content, to be honest. Uh, um, the whole, you know, it's this thing. It it just doesn't work for what what I do. Um, but I I am um, I'm working on a on a circus piece right now. Um, and uh, that that is uh, really, you know, it, it it's a bit slow because uh, I, I don't know how many of you been checking the fabric district lately. It's a little sad what's happening. A lot of fabric stores and everything, but you know, so far we are trying to figure out to, a way to come back with this. Uh, smaller company who wants to travel um, that it's a, it's a circus content all my big shows got postponed already 2020 to 2023 yeah um. oh no you're frozen 
You've frozen. I, I, I know. Sorry. I'm sorry. I had a stupid look at my face. Okay. <laughs> um, Anna, you have a question? Hi. Yeah. Um, just kind of uh, going off of your creative work currently. So those larger productions, were they going to be for theater or were they going to be any um, like television or, or film? I don't do television. Uh, I um, it's, a, it's a different animal and I'm, I haven't been that interested, to be honest. Um, but uh, they're they're big operas that oh. just because you know they're big <laughs> and nobody wants to sing it in each other's face these days you know it's, it's still like very we are taking it very slow um we are hoping that we can bring a show uh, back that was done 15 years ago uh that it's about 9 11 uh and it happened in philadelphia um especially because they're 20 years you know uh, anniversary since it happened so we are planning to do that and hoping to get it to new york but it's still a dance with the venues with you know um i mean there you know i i was two weeks ago or a week ago time is a weird thing lately but i was at the uh at the armory and uh you know it was a show where you had to, and it was like a kind of a dance party. D David Byrne did it with a bunch of artists. So you basically dance for an hour, but you had to get an hour earlier there and they could afford it to get tested. Oh, to test okay. you. So basic, but not everybody can do that. You know no. what I mean? So whatever, whatever the partnership, whatever the arrangement, whatever the money behind that. But you basically have, like, if you will walk in, you know, one of those places to get tested, that's what it was. You, we got tested, then we were sitting in a different room and waiting for the results, you know, so you had to show up an hour earlier to do that. Um, and, you know, they, they can't afford to their usual number of uh people audience members to be inside just because they can't but the armor is huge and that's also an advantage you know of like being able to experiment with that now are we gonna see that hopefully in the fall i don't know you know um but yeah but going back to to my projects everybody's cautious everybody's still figuring out how like even with us at Yale and Yale Rep, we we still are not clear how we're going to proceed in the fall. Definitely more in the spring, but the fall it's still rocky. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I was just interested as to how far out you've all had to push things. So. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean like, and it's still like it's you know even with that it's still a bit up in the air. It's like uh, <laughs> still like oh this hold to those dates but you know it's still a but you know um but you know we we it, it's fine it is what it is and we still have to keep going yeah thank you of course miranda did you have a question yeah hi um thanks for coming today of course thank you for having me of course um do you generally stay with the same theater for multiple projects or are they separate contracts from show to show? It, it's contract based. So, you know, I mean, I, if I get invited, I get invited, uh, but I'm not a hire. It's, it's just for contract. I'm okay. not full time with a theater. No. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I have one more question. Um, I saw that you do set design as well. Is that generally the same contract or is it your hire? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, Azat, I see your hand up as well. Hi. Hi. Thank you for sharing for this all information. Yeah. Of it, it, it was... Oh, no. You got frozen. 
You got yeah. stuck. Hello. <laughs> I think we need you to repeat. Is that I? Don't, we couldn't hear you. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Oh. You there? I don't about know. Now? Oh. Yes, we can hear you now. I'm okay or not? Yes, you're fine now. Okay, so my question is, for example, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, my question is, for example, for special for special events, we are choosing uh, like a special quality fabric, for example, silk, like a high quality silk or something. Like for custom design, I just want to understand, is that still important to find the, like a high quality fabric or it's just a, just, a, just more focusing on a decoration or some like of design? Uh, I'm, I mean, let me ask you, can, can, can I answer you with a question actually? What, why do you choose, sure. what, what do you, why do you choose a certain fabric for your design? Uh, because, uh, I mean, if I'm choosing, like, uh, if I'm making an uh, event dress, yeah, I want that uh, woman or, yeah, so when, when they're going some events, even like, uh, yes, they, they look like a, uh, luxury right or i'm choosing mm -hmm. like a luxury fabric or something like a high quality fabric i want the way it looks like that but the rest looks like that and mm -hmm. so um, but I, I i just want to understand the custom designs for how they working in that so yeah that so, so so basically we i i I consider costume design and that's how i teach my my students uh you know first of all we are storytellers and we are like let's put it this way we're like almost anthropologists you know um and we are looking it depends if it's a dance piece or if it's a theatrical piece which it has a, a center uh, around a, a text or if it's an opera which is around the music and the text right um we tell stories and we are looking and are interested in the people that they're part who are telling the stories right so that's how we we start thinking first of all and now the the quality of the fabric yeah of course you can you can choose if you have the budget like for a blockbuster you know like something you know in the movie for twenty five thousand dollars a yard I'm, I'm just making up a number right now but you know you can choose that if you have the money but it's all about what is the story you're trying to say around the people who are going to wear those costumes. Who are they? That's how we are thinking. It's a bit different. We are not making people just attractive. We we are we are looking at life and stories and how we can tell that. And for me, fabrics, um, you know, like architects or sculptures are, you know, it totally depends what what are what story those fabrics are telling me. I'm choosing that based on who that character is, and they're wearing that because they're telling me that story. Mm. Thank you so much. It's it is very like a productive and like a very informative answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Jesse, did you have a question? Yes. Hi. Uh, thank you Hello. for today. I find thank like you. set design, like costume design, like very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's something I hope to get into. I don't know mm -hmm. how, but. A question I have for you is like, how would a young designer who has like no experience like in dance and theater go about like trying to gain experience in the field? Um, well, if you're really interested, come and talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it that way. Um, and you can start basically looking, you know, at work and see what designer you would like. 
to work with and slowly you know kind of um assisting i hate the word intern to be honest because that means not paying people and i don't believe in that um but and I, it, it for me is was a bit of a shock of <laughs> Oh, you know, it, it, it coming to this country and like people being interns, basically not paying people. And I, I do not believe that. I don't support that. I fought with when they were offered to me, young, young people, they wanted to be in the industry to be my interns. I was like, no, you got to pay them. <laughs> so I always, I always took care of that. But, uh, you know, like, even if it's not like somebody's main assistant or associate, like, even if you're part of a of um, of a team that they work on a show, so and you know, run errands and you're still getting paid, but you start kind of getting in and see what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I have another question because I was looking of at course. your work and I really liked how you would like kind of like tell a story with every. Um, production you were working with. So I was wondering if you have like an overall like brand, like aesthetic, design aesthetic, or is it just um, from each performance? It, it, you know, it's interesting you ask this because some people think that they recognize that it's me when they see the work without even looking at a program. But um, I realized I saw something in, in especially in the theater world, in the, the opera world, and even a, uh people kind of the especially if you you have a hit with something they start repeating themselves you know mm -hmm. in the design in the productions and how they do things and i'm a little afraid of that <laughs> that I, i'm a little scared of that because it's very easy to not challenge yourself so mm -hmm. to be honest I'm, I'm trying with every production and you know i see moments when i repeat certain things and i you know it, it just <laughs> it gives me a bit of a panic attack because i'm like oh my god I, ca I can't do that i just i you know i'm always looking ways of of figuring out different other languages that maybe sometimes they're not so easy for me to go the way you know just 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 to challenge myself as a designer because i i really do like your work like i was looking at your website oh, okay. and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> well but if you you know if you're serious about looking at and and experience contact me mm -hmm. i will definitely thank Great. you thank you So many people are jumping in early with questions, but that's totally fine. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. I don't see I don't see anybody because of this. Like it was like where is you can't see. Yeah. <laughs> um, Andrew has his hand raised as well. Of course. Hello. Hi. 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 Thank you for coming and speaking with us today. Of course. Thank you for having me. My question is, how much creative freedom do you have in your field? And if maybe you can explain the process of concept and, you know, mm -hmm. how you you come up with the concept and decide on, you know, what the style of, you know, whatever type of work mm -hmm. you're working on and mm -hmm. then the final product. Mm -hmm. um, people who hire me, they know that they're going to get me. And I'm <laughs> I, I can be uh, told. Like, it, it's not that I'm not a good collaborator, but they know that I'm, I'm not the exec, I don't execute. Let me put it that way. There are designers like that. I, I don't do well with that, you know, it's just not who I am. Um, and usually, you know, I, I get the email, I get the phone call, I get the conversation, you know, so we basically have first meetings most of the time we are trying to all of us to be there all the designers you know the lighting designer eventually the set designer um the projection designer if somebody the sound designer so with the director and we are trying to figure out what's the piece about and then we go separate ways and we might have another meeting like that um 
a second round and some of that some of us might br start bringing images research that they start like we start talking about the world we want to put that piece in you know so we gather research here and there um and obviously uh, uh, based on after we listen to the opera and read the libretto or like re read the play uh i'm staying usually if it has been designed i'm staying away and i never research what somebody else did i don't like to do that um then we go back again you know do more research bring more research and you see your directors or the choreographer there they start reacting to things and kind of what what's the world there is and it's with the people who you know have basically uh, uh, the last word because in the end you know as as much as much as we want to destroy hier hierarchies you know somebody needs to have <laughs> uh, uh, the last word in <laughs> in what we do and um and i start sketching you know um and i i, I sketch and I bring sketches and the, you know, the set design, it's the models. Um, and we start playing with the models and we start looking at the sketches. And sometimes I go back and I, I do revisions if necessary or finish. And that's how it is. And suddenly I, it's the first day of rehearsal. We have everything together, put it up for the actors and the theater and uh talk about it well how we approach uh, the piece mm -hmm. is there ever a time where you work on all of the process all the sketches and then when you're getting close to doing the fitting you're like this doesn't fit at all this doesn't fit the story like you know, oh um you know i i had also directors who <laughs> and you know there is a period of time where we have tech rehearsals just you know, sometimes we're in, and we are in tech rehearsal and I had directors who basically were panicked and say, oh, this is not working. It's never fun, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, and sometimes, you know, it's just like, ah, you know, what do we do? No money anymore or like, you know, all, but um, you manage, you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I think I mean, you know, sometimes in, in, in the fittings, I get the actors very late. So when I draw, I don't know the body types. And, you know, so some things that I've designed, I discover sometimes in the fitting that I need to change to adjust things in order to have the performer looking the way I want, right? Mm -hmm. X, Y, Z reasons, right? So I adjust in the fitting and the shots, usually they make mock-ups, you know, uh, so the mock-up, so we get to adjust, we get, we get to play, we get to rip, you know, uh, I, I have a reputation. Sometimes I will take big scissors and just like <laughs> <laughs> go into the garment and everybody will panic, you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I, I, I I've learned to, be okay to be flexible as well and maintain my idea and maintain but that's also you know it it's because i've been doing this for a while you know in the beginning it's a bit nerve-wracking but at the same time i do enjoy i do love what i do i do like you know the people the indios syncretic side of humanity so i get i get very um i you know i i i love watching people and i love discovering for who they are with with you know the the beauty and not so ugly you know so it, it, it's it's interesting it's it's you dive into that world when you work, you know, mm -hmm. and fears because it's it is very intimate to basically be in a room with somebody who's in their underwear, basically, and like letting them do whatever you want to do with a garment, you know, mm -hmm. and trusting you. 
but I love all of all of that. I love I love orchestrating that. I love like just you know coming pretty magical. And sometimes, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> you know, oh, but yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Thank you so much for answering my question. Oh, good. So good. Thank you. We had on a um, costume designer for TV earlier in the semester, and uh -huh. um, actually, this is this is the third semester that I've had on costume designers, and I always love to have someone like you who's much more stage focused, and I and mm -hmm. someone who's a little bit more film and television focused because I do feel like they're very different from each other. And yeah. um, I always, I tend to find that people who work on stage are a lot more artistic and a lot more mm. um, into the art form, which is right, right, right. Part obviously part of the reason you went on to teach as well because you yes. are very passionate yes. about it. <laughs> which is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you and you do you have a question as well? Yes. Uh, hi. hi. Thank you for coming and I really, Thank you. really appreciate it. I really like your. <laughs> aesthetic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and so my question is for young designer who want to start a career as a as freelance, how mm -hmm. what would you suggest to do to build communication with different people to like for to to getting higher, especially if I want to do a non-commercial project? I I really think you you need to start investigating designers. And who would you like to to approach? And just write them. Everybody has a website these days, you know. Uh, it's very easy. And I totally encourage you. Just you know, and and don't fixate on one person. You know, um, just find two three people you would like to work with and reach out. Really reach out. Okay. I really think so. Um, and yeah, I somebody somebody will say hello to you and invite you to to be part of their team. Yeah, and especially you know, you all the, like the degrees is in fashion, right? All all of yeah. them. Yeah. So yeah, I, I am. You, you do have skills. You know what I mean? You might not know this world of maybe the theater and performance and the opera. That's fine you know but if you for example are interested in film and tv th there is a website there is mandy.com i don't i think that still works find ways of like going and working for the tv and film and and start you know just as a, as a shopper but you get to be on set you know you get to see what it how it's done you also learn in those moments if you like to be part of this world you know, because it is important if you, you know, if you don't like the world, then maybe the fashion world is better, you know what I mean? So, or like something else, you know, or just like decide to do installation with clothes and become your own you know, installation artist. But you get to figure out working with other people how much you like, you know, to do it. Thank you. I am a little interested in doing fine art. Uh, I have another mm -hmm. question. No so, um, because in previous class, like, I have learned that in fashion, this in industry, the companies may care about the drawing scale more than construction scale. Mm -hmm. How do you mm -hmm. think it is? Is there a similar situation in costume design? Uh, well, w I mean, like. If you decide that you want to assist somebody, nobody's going to ask you for construction stuff, like construction skills. Um, but for example, if you will be interested to go further and, you know, study and like applied for grad school, I will tell you as a as somebody who's teaching, you know, as as a as a, a I will be very interested in your drawing skills. I, I would like your drawing skills to be at a certain level because, for example, at Yale for grad for the grad department, um, we like a certain level of, of the drawing of the figure drawing. Yeah. And my understanding is that oftentimes you meet with the director early on, and he wants to see or she or she wants to see your point of view 
And if you mm -hmm. don't have your own drawings to bring forth, it might be a little bit hard to get your point across. Exactly. I mean, like, I, I, I know a designer that she doesn't draw and somehow she made a career out of that. I, uh, I I need to see drawings, and I know that everybody's reacting well to seeing drawings. You know, it, it's 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 a way of communicating what you want. It's a com it's communicating for the for the shop who's going to build your costumes as well. You know, uh, and with that, it's always you know it's not just the drawings. It's a whole package of like technical drawings, sourcing uh you know uh patterns but like you know sometimes in details especially with something that it's not so traditional and you want them to not decide for you <laughs> when they build things you want them to do what you want them to do you know so and you know budgets like we are trying to to make sure that the designers that come out of Yale they will bring something to the table like that as well yeah. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Um, Hawa, did you have a question? Can you hear me? Okay. All right. So my Hi. question. Hi. Is, so I'm really interested in the performing arts, honestly. Like I love here. Mm -hmm. I used to, I mean, I'm a writer as well. Um, mm -hmm. One of my biggest questions is, if you were to work for a low budget um, production, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. what are the cons about doing that? Like, if it was like a five hundred dollar costume budget, how would how would you solve that? And there was a period time, like for example, like Bridgerton or The Queen's Gambit, like those Netflix shows. If it was on set, like on then, the then you then you say to them no, or no. they give you more money. <laughs> okay. Simple as that. You know what I mean? There. Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, you know, it's a fantastic question. One of the things that a, a big, big discussions right now we are trying to uh, get around is how it's important. You know, I mean, it's one thing when you you decide with a friend to do that, but mm -hmm. even you know, people mm -hmm. are people. <laughs> People are people. <laughs> mm -hmm. They all like, you know, uh, for their work to be seen. But mm -hmm. that that doesn't mean that you you have to die on a job because you can't put it together. You know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. believe in that. Actually, okay. I do not. Uh, and I do believe, and I promise you, I'm I'm a huge advocate for that. Mm -hmm. That that our work needs to be supported. Okay. Uh, and a good thing is like for me in my case and people who work and you know there is um, a union well I wish them to do more than they do but still there is a union and they're like union contracts and when you work you know mm -hmm. especially when the union houses or they're backing you up how it, the work's supposed to be done now very small shows still if you if you <laughs> you know what i mean um mm -hmm. when it's a very very small budget most of the time mm -hmm. you become more of a stylist it's not really okay. a designer and that's a big a big difference i mean it mm -hmm. can still be fun once but then you don't want to get burned out buy jobs that will not support you to be the best of you could be out there one of the best of you know you uh yeah i don't know i will recommend don't take it yeah <laughs> even, well, what even about, I mean, yeah what about indie people like say for example i started a production and i decided i'm i'm someone that likes to do everything by myself but what if somebody was an indie um, playwright mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they also, like me, have like design skills? What mm -hmm. is the best advice? Like, if you worked with somebody that did like small productions, what was the best advice you would give them? <sighs> to do it in a to learn how to delegate people to help you. Let me put it okay. that way. Okay. You know, because it can work once, it can work twice, but when 
you will try to do everything if you even if it's at a small level if you don't have people you like to delegate to help you mm -hmm. and like create with you you get burned out do you mm -hmm. want that why would no. you want that when you just start, start something <laughs> when you know what i mean like we don't have to work like that anymore mm -hmm. like finding ways to balance and also like you should <laughs> i encourage i encourage my students <sighs> When when I was in school, it was this model of like, you have to be alone, you have to be this wolf in the business and, you know, have a personal life too. Mm -hmm. Have work and have personal life. It's important. Okay. Not, you know what I mean? It mm -hmm. is important. If it does it doesn't mean necessarily to have a partner sometimes you choose or not to have that you know mm -hmm. or whatever situation but even like hanging out with friends mm -hmm. you know um do something else than being obsessed about the work it's healthier the work is better also okay thank you so much of course thank you allison do you have a question Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? I, I've been yes. going like that in and out. Like I keep getting kicked out. Oh, no, we oh. hear you. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so I know like from the stage, it's hard to see smaller details because the audience mm -hmm. isn't as close. Mm -hmm. Like in a movie or show, you don't have like those tight close-ups. Mm -hmm. um, so do you often find yourself compromising style elements? Like how do you choose uh, what you leave out? It totally depends. Uh, I I work a lot of um, we we involve projection design as well. So we and live feed. So when especially when you have a camera on stage, even if it's a theater or, or, or opera or dance, you know, um, that's going to be captured. Uh, I do not compromise. Um, big i mean it totally depends but um yeah it totally depends on the production obviously when you are in you know somewhere like bam the opera house it's more about the sculpture part of it and and even the detail the gesture needs to be a little different than when you have the camera on right uh but as i said i i work a lot of productions that we do a live feed or or projections you know um so details is important for me okay thank you thank you thank you anna another question yeah um i, I feel like all of our questions today everybody's been so thorough <laughs> yeah well, uh, <laughs> i guess then because I know you say that, um, you know, you don't want to have your own aesthetic where you're feeling like you're in your own box. But mm -hmm. if you had one dream production or maybe you've already done it, what is the dream production that just gets you excited about costume design or story? Um, it to it, 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 the people I work with get me excited. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because there are certain people they're gonna run wild with you and i have a very particular type of freedom and there are certain people who even if it's good work it's a little more conservative i like i like to run wild <laughs> you know so um it it i can't you know i can't say to you oh i would like i i you know i would like to do macbeth or i would like to do you know this piece or what and I, yeah, of course, I, will. I would like to do anything that excites me with the right people, if it makes sense. But makes, I mean, that just means that yeah. you love your work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave a little more time if any other students have questions as we go, but... um. I, one question that I've been kind of carrying throughout when, when speaking with people all semester long is just mm -hmm. uh, hearing a little bit about the personalities of different cities mm -hmm. because I don't usually get the opportunity to have 
people outside of New York on my show, but, um, mm-hmm. but this year being remote, I've got people from all over, but you've worked in other cities and other places. I don't know if, mm-hmm. you, can, I don't know if you can comment on how the personalities kind of change depending on where you, where you've worked. Um, yes. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I got to work in California. I got to work, uh, obviously in New York. I work in Philadelphia. I was in Syracuse. I don't even remember. Uh, I worked in Romania. I, I was in France, you know, we were doing the show in Lyon and that was, uh, and Italy, you know, and, um, of course they, you know, the personalities are changing and people are different. Uh, but that's also the beauty of it. You know, uh, you kind of have to go with the flow. Uh, I had the TCG grant, uh, and I, I went to India for three weeks and I went then to Mm -hmm. Japan, you know, and I was looking into performance and traditional performances and, and, uh, you know, uh, design. And, and I remember a friend of mine, before I left for India, she picked up the phone and said, you can get stubborn and you have to let it be because it doesn't matter what you're going to say and you can't be like, you know, they're going to do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an amazing, you know, that was an amazing lesson. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, so yeah. suddenly I wasn't like, we have to do it this way. I realized that it didn't matter. And that was, you know, I'm talking about a situation that completely, you know, like culturally challenges you in a, a different direction that you're used to. And it was amazing you know yeah. it was really beautiful and um i i think i also because i have a great sense of humor i get to laugh you know and i i see my you know um how how you know sometimes uptight i can be with certain things that <laughs> trying to control and nothing was working for example um when I went to California, you know, I I was working in LA, completely different feeling than, you know, or Philadelphia, which is just an hour and a half away from here and everything yeah. becomes slower than New York, you know what I mean? And for the first 24 hours, I just thought I'm going to pull my hair because <laughs> even like just asking for a coffee will take longer than I was used to in New York, you know, <laughs> but, but that's the beauty of it. That, you know, and because I am in, interested in humans and I am interested in watching humans, you know, just because of the work I do, uh, I take that in, you know, I take for yeah. who they are and the, the, the beauty that everybody brings to the, you know, to this world. Yeah, that's great. What's the, your favorite project that you worked on? Oh, goodness. Um, I don't know, I, I have several projects, you know, I, I like to work with big dance theater uh, because it's, it's very, um, because it, it combines both, it combines text and, and movement. Uh, I have another um, dear collaborator, which is Jay Scheib, that he's using a lot of camera work and um, uh, pretty intense uh, physical you know, uh, work on stage. I, I don't know, I, I love, I, just my choreographers in general. Um, I I like a lot of people. <laughs> the people that I don't like, probably I work one time and that's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, but um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, who do you who do you feel like is the most interesting person that you've met along the years? Oh, um, I mean, everybody's interesting on their own. You know, I I. I'm not, I don't, I don't get starstruck. 
So, uh, you know, even if I work so-called stars, I, I don't get starstruck. Um, no, I lie. One time I got starstruck at Gamba Circle with, with Sting. I saw Sting. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and, I, and I think I was so amazed that he still looks so young. <laughs> I, was, I wanted to go and say, dude, tell me your secret. <laughs> yeah, what are you drinking? <laughs> what's your what's your lo lotion, you know? Oh, my gosh. Uh, your routine. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I work with different people who are recognized as famous, but... Um, I, I I meet you know everybody. Everybody is is really wonderful and uh, and again some of them even though they're not, it's still interesting to watch that you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what do you think are important qualities that someone should possess to be in your field? Um. Well, you know, the, the easiest, uh, easiest answer is to be professional. Now, what that means, you know, it's basically, it, it, you know, just if you want to be a designer, you just, you really need to be open. You really need to, um, besides the good work, besides, um, you know, being on top of your work and, and being as much as you can organized, um, being a good boss, let me put it that way. Uh, you know, as explaining earlier, delegating people, yeah. uh, being kind to people at the same time, cl having clarity, um, being, staying curious, you know, having grace, I think those are very important, uh, and, and, and yeah, in in this world. Um, another theme, you know, I touched a bit on being in different cities um, or places mm -hmm. around the world, but mm -hmm. another theme that I also love to touch on this semester, it just because it's such a big topic out there, is sustainability. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, didn't know if this is something that's impacting you in your line of work or how how you're reacting I, to i mean it. we are not there yet you know uh and i think that the the work you know we are still figuring out a way of doing that um i wished to be in a better place but we are not yeah. just because we still need to get better the you know how you know inventing the, the the fabrics and you know what what the needs are for the work we do uh you know obviously there's steps but we need bigger steps in order to do that yeah and we are not really there yet you know i mean we are talking about a lot of waste and what do you do with the sets that after that you know what you throw you know what what do you do with all the stuff you know, in our case, the costumes get to be in in warehouses and, you know, sometimes reused, sometimes, you know, whatever. But um, we are still, we still don't have a very good plan yet. I don't think so yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying, all of us trying to work better that, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, other than COVID right now, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing your industry? I mean, you know, uh, for us, the industry right now, just because it's been on pause, and we, you know, the hardest part about this country is the it's not it's the fact that the government is not taking care of the arts, and we depend on people with money, and we're gonna see what that means uh after this pandemic i mean you know their promises they're trying but one of the biggest problem when the pandemic started we you know uh, uh inequality was a big deal there are lots of artists and who left new york because they cannot pay the rents you know yeah um 
so that needs to change. I yeah. really think so. It's not going to happen soon, but that needs to change. It needs to be a, a, a better way of like taking care of the artist. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a big challenge for sure. Yeah. Um, does your does your process look any different for you if you're working on something for theater, for dance, or for opera? I don't know. Uh, you know how, how do they differ? I mean, each of them depends what they, uh, you know, I mean, with the opera, it's all about the music and the text. It totally depends where where is that coming from, you know, uh, conceptually. the Obviously, the play, it's about the text. And the dance, most of the time, I need to go and sit and watch rehearsals, even if they're like in the beginning, in order to kind of get a sense what's the piece about. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. really. I would imagine that the motion, you know, the the flowiness of yeah, the garment exactly. really depends on right. how they're right. moving. Right. Yes. Yes. Is that challenging that you have to work so much closer into actual production time? Oh, uh, no, no, because the the thing is about the dance pieces, they always rehearse in advance. Uh, uh -huh. You know, it's not like theater. Theater, usually the, the time period is shorter and opera even shorter. Uh, with dance, people like to rehearse their pieces a year or two years. It's not like every month, but they take chunks of times. Oh, wow. and, they re and even if they change it later towards the end, they still, they start earlier. So it's very different. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I guess my final question, and I'll see if there are any more from the students, is just what piece of advice you would have for a student who wants to enter the industry right now as a costume designer? Uh, I think, well, first of all, wait a bit for this pandemic to go away. <laughs> yeah. Don't go right now. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, again, I would like start kind of looking at designers, start looking, you know, there's so many um, online shows that can be watched, uh, movies, and kind of start thinking what, what does the costume do? for those people how how are they approached you know and start looking at designers designers that you want you want to work with you know and kind of see like see what they do yeah yeah Thank you. that's great um students does anyone have a question they didn't get answered well yeah evan um, yes, uh, thanks for coming. Um, I was Thank curious you. If, if you feel that um, maybe you were surrounded by or pushed to uh, have like different design aesthetics uh, from your education at NYU versus in Romania. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I think like that, you know, uh, there is, goodness. There is something about the American theater that it is a bit much more traditional, and uh, you know, sometimes, <laughs> uh, that, you know, um, a bit, you know, kind of true to the text and no room for interpretation and bigger thoughts, you know, philosophical thoughts around, you know, um, of the worlds, let me put it that way, that we are trying to create. Um, for example, it was it was very interesting for me, and still, and I, I'm I'm very vocal about it. For example, Chekhov, right, that he wrote in 1900, and it's all about like Russians. There is a bit of a tradition in in American culture of trying to make this poor performers to be Russian suddenly and like <laughs> from 1900. And I don't believe in that. Let me put it that way. You know, I, I do believe that the text tells you bigger philosophical, you know, p questions out there that can be interpreted, you know, and that doesn't mean the cast needs to be white <laughs> and somehow 
uh, reduced to to look Russian. You know what I mean? Uh, Timeless. It can, it, yeah, it, it can't. You know, you can do that with mixed cast. We can, you can do that like, you know, uh, a, a totally black cast or like uh, or Asian or whatever. You know what I mean? Just bring people in to tell stories with like with the bigger questions. You don't have to try to make them Russians. That doesn't exist. Also, nobody is behaving like in 1900 anymore. Come on, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I think. You know. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions out there? Everybody has like really amazing backgrounds and creative, you know, backgrounds. It's really yeah, lovely. I know. I like, I like what you put on there. I mean, it's very interesting to look at. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. This was wonderful. Thank you for having me. Great perspective and um, have a great rest of your day. <laughs> thank you. Well, have a lovely end of the semester. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Bye. bye bye thank you students i just have i just want to chat with you for one moment longer um so just a couple of um just a couple of call outs i feel like given what we discussed today but also what we discussed with katie irish earlier on, on in the semester and i think when you are sitting there if you're sitting there wondering do i want to go the costume design route or do i want to stay you know the fashion design route. Uh, some of the things that really stand out to me as some key differences is that in costume design, and I want to touch on this during our today's lecture, is that you're you are designing for one very specific person when you set out to make a specific costume, and that um, what you are trying to get across as a costume designer is is actually invoking some aspect of storytelling and letting the audience know you know what this person's all about what their motives are you know main main topics about them uh, and sometimes you do have to be involved with historical accuracy i know she was just talk, talking about Chekhov and maybe throwing that out the window but depending on the piece you're working on both in film or in theater um that is an important piece of it. Um, you know, Katie Irish talked about that earlier on in the semester when she was talking about how difficult it was designing for the Americans um, because she had to really kind of hit the 80s hard um, and making sure that that is something accurate and timeless that's going to be recognized by people. In fashion design, it's important to be keeping uh, up with the idea that something needs to be for mass appeal. And again, that varies depending on who you're designing for and how many pieces you're cutting. Um, but generally, you want it to be something that, that people desire and want to purchase, and a lot of people are going to be interested in it. And also, you have to keep in mind that it needs to be very representative of a specific brand. So in fashion design, even if you're designing for yourself um, or if you're designing for a company, everything that you design should kind of be reflective of that same vision and that same cohesive brand statement for yourself or anyone else. And that's not to say that things can't shift and different deliveries don't look completely different from each other, but at the same time, um, you know, there is some sort of cohesion that exists from um, step to step. In costume design, not so much. I mean, you can design for one show and have these totally different ideas within two different specific people. Um, the design process typically starts out with an analysis of the text uh, and then some collaboration in design work. Um, costume research then goes from there with preliminary sketching and color layout happening. Um, final sketches usually then get getting brought forth to your director and then the sourcing it can be a large part of what you do, whether it's pulled, rented, chopped or constructed. Um, and I think also depending on if we're talking film or television or we're talking about theater, it's going to be a very different end result with how you end up sourcing. I think typically it tends to be that if you work in theater, you end up constructing a lot more of your garments. You also tend to need to have duplicates of things because of the fact that if it runs for a long time, you're never going to survive if you only have one key piece um, that exists. If you're interested, here is a little bit more on costume design. Um, I'm just going to throw these into the chat. 
Now it's playing it, sorry. There we go. Um, there's the first one. It's a YouTube um, about the design of a costume. I'm sorry, the role of a costume designer. And then the second one is the uh, different Oscar costume design winners over the years, which is also a really interesting look. The first one's about eight minutes, the second one's about five, so. Um, I don't even know if you guys can hear it, but it keeps playing in my ear. Um, and then on another documentary, which I find very interesting, obviously you guys know my background, hopefully I don't talk about Ralph Lauren too much, but um, there's a documentary out called Very Ralph, and it is about Ralph Lauren, and I feel like he is a person who actually has taken this costume design um, and been inspired by it to become a designer. He's actually super inspired by movies. And every time that he designs a collection, his, his number one question is, what is the movie? Meaning like, where are we? Where are we going? What's the mentality behind these people? And I think it's one of the reasons why he has been so successful over the years is that he instills a certain sense of nostalgia into his fashion design, which isn't necessarily something that can be recreated, but I do feel like it's this really interesting, um, very large brand that has found this mix between the film industry and design. So does anyone have any comments actually before we move forward? Um, questions, call outs, thoughts about costume design? Uh, if, you, if you are working as a fashion designer, but you wanted you were looking for a new job. Is it okay to segue into costume design, but not as a permanent route, but as just like an, an opportunity you wanted to? Yeah, or like something to do yeah. on the side. Um, yeah, just so actually a speaker that I've had on in the past, her name's Maria Hooper, um, did just that. She was working at Gap, I believe it was, in sweaters. Um, and was doing quite well with it, but just really was interested in costume design, you know, maybe did it as, as she, while she was growing up in high school or things like that, and um, kind of just took a leap of faith. Um, she as well did go get her MFA. I do feel like there are a lot of people who go back to, in costume design, do go back to get their MFA, just because it is such a artistic thing. Um, I'm, I don't think it's, I definitely don't think it's necessary, but I do feel like there are a lot of people that lend themselves to that in like the study of costume design. So she went back and then she segued back into costume design. And because of that, she didn't ever work the, the lower levels of the costume design. She kind of catapulted herself in at, in at a higher level because she already kind of knew how to design. Um, but I think she told, you know, she told me that she pe crosses paths. She crosses paths with a lot of people who come from the industry in the fashion industry, um, you know, maybe 50, 50 or so, like come from the industry and that some that um, were born and raised costume designers, you know, did their whole career. So, Is it okay I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, sorry, I, I, I was asking another question, but I, 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 of I, I, I just need to finish. Um, it, it, um, if you were if you were a costume designer for a movie or a, some independent film or a play, um, a costume designer who is uh, working for a project that is modern day, do they oh do they typically create the costumes like design them or do they ever shop around for them? I think they shop. I I think they definitely shop around for them as well. Um, you know, it's interesting, uh, going back to that Maria Hooper interview, that was one of the things that she said she found actually the most challenging about doing modern day is because you're shopping, it, it's easy to access and easy to get out there and get the product and the clothes that you're going to put on the, um, on the characters. But at the same time, everyone has a lot more opinions, like the director or someone is a lot more likely to strike it down if it's modern day because they know it was easy to get and they know that, um, you know, it can kind of, it can be recreated so they can kind of steer it in a different direction. But I think I, I would absolutely say that there's a lot of shopping that ends up happening in more modern day pieces of costume design. Um, the one thing to keep in mind for theater is that you usually, I think if they say you should have at least four um, of an item on at any given time, just in case it gets dirty or things like that. So 
that is something to keep in mind if you do if you are shopping you need to have duplicates so do you know how the interview process would go or did did um did she already mention like oh, if if it was for a movie or something would they ask me to put together an outfit for a 1970s family or something <laughs> Um, I, I don't know specifically, I have asked. Uh, and it probably totally depends. Are, are you going on an interview? Cause I feel like you should ask them, you know, like, should I be bringing a portfolio or, um, you know, is there a project I can do for you to show you? I mean, I think if you're going on any, any interview, any amount of prep group work that you bring in would be like, I've done some forethought on what this role entails. And here's my forethought, you know, here's my best, you know, three, four sketches of what I think about this, um, about working here or, you know, working on this film. Um, okay. I think that that just would show like initiative and show that you care and show that you've given some good thought to it. Um, it also will probably tell you, give you a clear vision if you like it, if you like what you're embarking to work on, you know, I'm like embarking on, but, um, I think it would definitely depend on where you're going. I, you know, I feel that in general, uh, all the costume designers we've had on kind of get their start by doing one thing, you know, getting a foot in the door, and then you build connections, and those connections kind of take you with them um, because they, you know, you worked well together, and it kind of you can rise from there. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor. No problem. Any other questions or call outs? Okay, well today I'm giving you guys a freebie. Um, we're ending class over 20 minutes early, but this gives you the perfect amount of time if you haven't done it yet to do your student evaluations. Um, not just for me, but for all your professors, because it's definitely important. And, um, and I'm gonna take attendance today off of a log. So have a great week, everyone. I will see you next week for our, um, our final single panelist, our single speaker, which is Rachel Landy from Kate Spade. And then our last lecture will be the week after. So. Things are really coming to a head here. I can't believe it's almost May. But I'll see you guys in a week. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.